Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Premier Popper League. I'm Evan Irwin here live with Michael Pechek. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. Uh, that was a pretty enjoyable match to watch with uh, yes. elves getting to do elf things. From the top rope, <laughs> direct yeah, with the yeah. elbow into the eye socket. Just yeah. the sick nut draw of every elf now makes half a mana. Oh, oops, now we make <laughs> one mana for every elf, and my hand went everywhere. You know, you know, in all my years, I've never been able to figure out if that deck actually ever goes infinite, but it always feels like it's just on the cusp of it when everything comes together. Yeah, there, there's got to be some sort of theorem we can write on how <laughs> infinite the, the actual elf deck can go. Um, but yeah, so that was that was neat. That was fun. Um, I enjoyed playing with my astrolabes. I still think they were <laughs> worth playing. Um, it was enjoyable that he always had the, uh, was it the spider silk armor? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was always fun. And then I was like, okay, somehow the only way out of this was I have to do the Archaeomancer into the double, uh, like trickery and like, I just don't have enough mana. And then he's just over there doing things. <laughs> and I'm over here like, yeah, I can make that happen. And then I look up and there's like 37 elves in the mm. bed. So, Yeah. Well, you, you fought the good fight, but sometimes that deck just does its thing. It's one of, one of the sort of occupational hazards of Popper. Just not a lot of actual full-on wraths mean that creature combo decks that flood the board tend to tend to do their thing. Yeah, if I had had Pestilence or something, you know, maybe I could have kept up. But uh, in a world where all I got to like Trickery and a bunch of one-for-ones, it's uh, not great. There are there are a lot of good feelings in magic, but resolving pestilence against elves has got to be like I mean, pretty high up there. Between all of his spells, getting like four cards at a time, three <laughs> cards at a time, like it was insane. He did run incredibly hot on his leads and winding ways. It was it was a thing to behold. Yeah, it was it was sweet. Um, all right, so now we have Kendra here, who is again uh, in for Emma Partlow, who uh, we hope is feeling better. Uh, playing the uh, playing the Bogles. Is it the Boggles or the Bogles? I can never remember. I believe Bogle is the actual pronunciation, but I have always gotten it in my head as Boggle. Bogle, Dogle, Boggle, whatever. We know it's the expert <laughs> deck. And uh, I got ran over by this thing because you got to give respect to Armadillo Cloak. You can't not respect that yep. card. The uh, card is insane. And uh, between that and the cartouches that are just ridiculous, I mean... <laughs> The, the one of miser copies that just blow out certain situations so cleanly. The fling, <coughs> fist of ironwood for the trample just out of nowhere that they can buy back. Like, oh, oh my goodness. God, I, I, always, I always forget that fist of ironwood has text on it other than it makes a 1-1 one, one and pumps Ancestral mm -hmm. Mask. Yeah, yeah, the card is, card is super duper sweet, uh, super powerful. So you have that on one. And the other side here, we have Joseph, who is playing Bant Ephemerate. And this is just one big Mondo combo deck. And because both of them just kind of like do their own thing, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of interaction before Joseph starts putting stuff on top of their library, but it's just going to be the enchantments, and usually they provide value going in or going out. So uh, I, I guess we're just kind of race. You know, feels feels pretty racy here. It's it's going to be a very bizarre race. It, it feels weird classifying a matchup as a race when one of the decks has eight creatures that can attack, and <laughs> none of them are bigger than two twos, right? Like, right. yeah. I guess. I mean, they're going to be just like it's just value town, right? It's like look at how much value we can get. Try not to die with weather the storm. I uh, yep. just get get super cute with your mole drifters and. I, Okay, I don't know if that's enough, but we will see. But I think it's time to get down to the match and see what happens. Yeah, let, let's get into this. All right. I mean, weather the storm is great and all, but even in your match against Boggles, we saw like multiple weather the storms aren't always a guarantee. Yeah, it's just not. It's not <laughs> usually enough uh, to uh, to get you there. Um, all right. Because, so like the explosiveness is insane. So unfortunately, it looks like Kendra's hit a hand here with no hexproof creatures in it. And that is uh, no creatures at all. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> kind of expensive, but OK. And the one the one lands a little rough, but we do. She does have a redraw. She is on the play. She's going to get to resolve a one one. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I think I think she's got to keep this just because Boggles is not a deck that is notorious for mulliganing dreadfully well. Like it's got one of its four card draw cards in its hand right now. 
I mean, the London Mulligan mm-hmm. helped it out a whole bunch. Um, yes. Any deck that relies on very specific types of creatures and to draw them and play things on them, uh, obviously benefited there. Uh, you have Joseph here. He's going to start getting his Explorers underway, which is fine. Yup. Um, to Bounce Land seems good. And it, and it, look, it looks like he's got a pair of Archaeomancers, but no real payoff. He does have the Ephemerate. He, he's, he's at like two out of three pieces for where he wants to be. Right. We're, we're almost like super cute. Like we're getting close to cute. Mm-hmm. We're not mm-hmm. cute yet. We're just kind of, we're, we're, we're dolled up right now. And it's time to start to get cute. Meanwhile, we have, <laughs> I'm going to smash you to death with these giant enchantments. Oh yeah, the, God. the the double armadillo cloak is going to be an interesting one because notably that thing does not grant lifelink. Mm-hmm. It grants an instance of a triggered ability. So this is not only going to put her life total through the roof, but Kendra's also just going to be hitting in. I mean, it, it, it grants a sentence that like somebody at Wizards like just had to throw down a gauntlet and be like, no. This works with every instance of the sentence. I don't care. And they just be like, okay, fine. All right, editor person. Well, you got it. You won. That was that was interesting there. We, we, we just saw Joseph hit the land with the abundant growth attached. So okay. this was something that Chris brought up earlier is that – that sort of att- angle of attack is something that's going to work out really well here. Being able to punish those auras being placed on lands is mm-hmm. going to really affect how Kendra values those cards because she kind of, at this point with the Archaeomancer in hand, she has access to an abundant growth. That abundant growth is basically going to cantrip and maybe fix mana once. Mm-hmm. And, so, but yeah, the issue is essentially is that the the temporal spring thing, uh, the or is that right? Temporal spring. Yeah, temporal spring. Temporal spring. Yes. Uh, the the issue with that card is that it's just kind of delaying things. The, the same thing happened in my match, which was you can just keep putting him on top, and I'm just going to keep drawing him and playing him until he kills you, and that's more or less what happened. So it bought a little bit of time, but it wasn't a big enough swing. And the, the, the archaeal answer is a one two. It's just such a beating. Yeah, so I, I think the notable thing here is where your match, you had access to Mull Drifters to kind of break through that one card on top. Mm-hmm. Kendra really doesn't have access to anything like that. So I think it's going to be a little bit rougher for her. Mm-hmm. The big thing here is she does just have some of the best enchantments in her deck in hand. And granted, it's going to be a little rough only casting one of those a turn, and she probably would really like to hit, you know something in the vein of ethereal armor here just Mm -hmm. to kind of supplement what she's got going on. But she's not, she's not wanting for, you know, higher quality cards. I think at this point she just wants more. Whoa. Was that, uh, that's just a scoop on that one. Wow. I was not expecting that. I didn't feel like that was out of range at all. Quite frankly. Um, I mean, I guess if you just want to, you know, skip it and, and move on but like okay because again even though like there was just no pressure there you know there's yeah. like it's it's cute we're super super cute like we dolled yeah. up we got the bows in the hair i'm telling you absolutely adorable but i don't know how he's winning that game even from that position all she has to do is just wait on another land and just play armadillo cloaks you know but okay yeah. uh, it it's a little tough and i think like I know Kendra, she has put in a ton of work in terms of just grinding on Miko. Part of that might just kind of be the muscle memory of like knows that the long grind that she's not going to get there essentially. Because it was a grind and he was definitely setting up for it's going to take eight or nine turns for you to do anything. Ooh, this is a hand again. She and I think this is why we were shocked earlier to see the four ancestral mask and four armadillo cloak. Like this is a land light deck. And that mm. first hand looked a little dicey just on the back of all of those three drops. Mm-hmm. This, this however, looks a lot better. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling a lot better about this one. Um, it's not amazing, but it's okay. Again, again, the lack of like low CMC auras is a little rough here. Mm-hmm. But 
And it, it, wow, it actually looks like she put back the second boggle. That is, that is a bold one there. That's, that's, that's aggressive. Um, meanwhile, Seeker of the Way plus a bunch of spells that trigger it seem good. I certainly do. All right, yeah. I, I This was the line I was expecting. Abundant growth to cantrip, dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Next turn, she can hit the tap land and cast her boggle, or she can... Okay, went with the tap land. So she's on board. She's got, again, two of the heavy hitter enchantments. Mm -hmm. And looking across, Joseph is on track for a turn three temporal spring, but... I'm not sure how well that's going to work out for him here. Ooh, and hitting that, hitting that ethereal armor. I guess the question here is, does she cast a? Oh no, she's she's just going for the, just going for the, <laughs> the big one. Yeah. Because there, there's kind of the question of, do you want to just cast the ethereal armor, even though it's a little bit worse, just to avoid having to deal with temporal spring, by way of dispel? Because hmm. that. Well, that you can't. Can it you doesn't back. counter. This, it can't counter the sorcery. So, oh, um, that's right. It's a sorcery. What? Yeah. Right. Hmm. We'll get the nature's chant, which is the best well. chant of all time. The, the disnaturalize. Ooh, that's spicy. All right, all right. We're we're getting somewhere here, and the fact the fact that she now has rancor is mm -hmm. with this spell up right now. Ooh. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, this could be over pretty quickly after she counters this. Yep. And yeah. He... All right. So now, 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 now we're up at a high life total. We've got a big creature. Joseph's on the back foot. He needs to find something to help deal with this situation. Right. Anything he temporal springs in terms of an enchantment, they can just replay. Okay, they could take away the land, which is whatever, but that's a land's going to come into play untapped. And two, is a, two sources of trample makes this especially difficult for him because even if he temporal springs one of them and has memory lapse backup, he can't make sure that this doesn't get through at all. He also right. doesn't know about that ancestral mask in hand, which is really just going to hammer this point home. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're going to take care of one trample, and then, oops, the entire mask just smashed you <laughs> to pieces. And that's okay. But yeah, Explore is okay, sure. I mean, I, I guess maybe gain a bunch of life, hope they don't deal too much. The, I believe that is a weather of the storm in his hand. Right, but does he have enough mana? Oh, he does, yeah. Another so land drop. He might get, he might get to see another turn here, but well, if he was going to weather well, the storm, he would have played it before the damage was dealt. Yeah. Okay. So this is probably going to eat memory lapse. Right, but then he's at two. Yeah, he's still not in a great position here. Right. I guess mm. you could temporal spring. You could ephemerate swing for four. Keep memory lapse up, but these even then gaining six, gaining four is going to take him to six. That's that's not enough. Yeah, I think I'll I think he whiffed on a draw that he couldn't mm. whiff on. Yeah, I'm not sure what he could have drawn at this point to maybe another blocker or something. I don't know. Is it two? He, again, even another blocker like with trample and a super high power, it's not it's not going to save him here. Right. Thinking it through. And I had I'm seen some chatter in like the Twitch chat earlier that apparently there's a version of this deck that runs fogs and it is felt in both of the games I've watched Joseph play like having a, you know, moments piece or something in here would probably help out. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're we're trying to shrink it. All right, all right. And this does actually bury that ancestral mask one deeper, which is fair. Yeah, it's nice. But Joseph's kind of in this position of just trying not to lose. Right. As long as she's just patient. He's drawing well. He keeps drawing those springs. 
I mean, I, I think at this point he's kind of on the spring or our Kaomancer or live draws. Everything else is it's bad. Yeah. And Kendra's at 39, clearly the commanding position. And he also doesn't have a great place to snap off this weather the storm to even sort of try and turn the corner that way by just stabilizing on life total alone. Right. The one green source also is kind of awkward. Yeah. All right, where is this temporal spring guy? Okay, so getting the getting the armadillo cloak off the board. Right. Swings in for three with lifelink. All right, let's do the ephemerate. I think he's going to wait on the ephemerate just... Will she the take the bait? Hmm. And because of the way the stack works with prowess, that ended up poorly. Yeah, that mm. I don't think that was exactly what, how he wanted that one to work out. Yep. Yeah, that's the end of that match. Well, that going to game right. three here. Yeah, going to game three. Unfortunately, the um, you know, the prowess trigger doesn't doesn't work the way you always want it to. And and I found out that myself when I was playing, which was at one point I could ephemerate it, but I you know just left it a two two and. It's not enough. So, so I mean, right. I, I think we've now seen like a pretty reasonable idea of how these two decks want their games to play out. And I think the interesting thing here is Boggles just hit so hard and so quickly that even with two of her cards getting tucked every single turn, Kendra still managed to close that one out without much of an effort on her part. She just kept applying that pressure. Oh, mm -hmm. and there's there's that Miser's copy of Fling in there. The Miser's Fling. I mean, I, I think I one of the things is that this deck's very, this deck is very greedy. Yeah. Um, th there have definitely been, like, even greedier builds of Boggles in the past. And the, the one Fling in there, I'm actually kind of shocked that that one managed to, that one stayed in that there wasn't something better in the board. Interesting. Utopia sprawl. Originally showed up in dissension. It's a four dollar uncommon. Oh yeah. In paper. Um yeah, because it's very rare you can find a one mana mana accelerant that sticks on the land. One mana mana accelerant synergizes nicely with Arbor Elf. Mm -hmm. All sorts of all sorts of nice things going on for it. So with having to keep the uh, memory lapse back, this is probably going to be a short game. Yeah, because holy cow! Once that ethereal armor hits, and and that card just came out of literal nowhere. Uh, you know, these days it's like you know obviously this incredible enchantment, but back in the day it was like what in the world. How, how powerful is this thing? They they keep like every so often support giving like little support to the the boggles archetype, and every single time, like it still blows my mind to this day that ancestral mask was ever okay as a common. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what they didn't know. Yeah, That's it's somebody was complaining right. today about uh, true name nemesis, and it's like, look, they you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're looking to sell some commander decks and they did it. And it's a yeah. mistake. So that's the seven point smash. Yup. And this is going to present a pretty big problem for Joseph as he is not getting a flyer for another two turns here. Ooh. That is, that's that rough. is going to be a problem. Yeah. That's and this mask. I mean, she hits a land here. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess they'll lapse it, but then we'll have another fall. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Three of a kind. Goodness gracious. Yeah, and it's like, well, whatever. I guess I'll just smash for seven, <laughs> like you do. I, I this is this is the Kendra's just been all night on like the most still had all these magic I have seen in years. <laughs> it's just like, oh, cool, yeah. Like you you can play as well as you like. I'm just gonna keep drawing the card I need every single time. 
From the top rope. Goodness gracious. Oh, and we see Joseph even going in for the slightly greedy option of evoking it. You got to do something. Because, like, there is another another memory lapse at hand. Like, I mean, are we weathering the storm here? Is that really how we're going to stop this monster from crushing you? I mean, he taps out here for for the storm. I mean, I, I guess that's game, isn't it? But I, the th- the thing is, oh, he's in a real bad. He's in a real tough decision point here because he's in. I, he has to counter this every single yeah. turn. Yeah. Or he if, he, if if he doesn't, he's just done. And the other still thing is, he, yeah, like he's still not in a good situation. He's just not immediately dead. All right. Wow. All right. I mean, we evoke we, it because why not? I mean, I get. I guess. I guess, as far as he's concerned, like if he hits the ephemerate, cool, great. Ooh, that was not what he wanted to see. That's there. a that's a yikes for me. It's a big yikes on the explore yeah. bounce land draw. Ooh. Yeah, oof, that is not what he wants to see there. I mean, it's a weird race. <laughs> you know, like what happens here? We we went the storm. We smashed in with our three threes with life link. Yep. I guess we take them to seven, and then she's like, still had all these masks. You literally know what's on top of my deck. Yeah, and and he, having to cast the Weather of the Storm doesn't even let him bluff the idea that there's a counter spell. And even if he could, Goodness he's just going to slam it. What a like, smash. Well, there you go. Yeah. The goldfish goes round and round <laughs> in the ball. That's how it works. Like, yeah. Are you doing something? To that? <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I'm playing with my toys over here. I, I see you've assembled this beautiful machine, but uh, I have a hammer. And I've got this battle cruiser, you see. <laughs> yeah. And it smushes you. Man, Kendra has just been putting up a hell of a performance tonight. I, I've been been a pleasure to watch. Yeah. She's, um, she's, taken, she's done Emma proud. Yes. She That's certainly has. That. Yeah. Done, done a great job on that one. But uh, that, was, that was certainly a, a nice... Quick smashing, I guess, again, the first game, maybe we just, you know, maybe she's like, I'm just going to put on a show and I can't put on a show right now. <laughs> Let me go backstage, come back out with a little sideboard action, you know, put my put my cape on. I think there's also like that that element of just like being used to the the match timers. Mm-hmm. There is that certain point where where you're going to just say, like, if I quit, I have a better chance of winning this match. So Absolutely. some of that might have kicked in. But yeah. So, uh, right. So let's see here with the uh, the schedule turns to be up next. It's going to be Joseph and Alex on commentary with Kendra and CVM playing. So you guys can check that out live. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching the Popper Premier League. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. And we will be back here in just a few moments. <laughs> 